the curse of ease and the benefit of struggle. Sometimes things break perfectly, so perfect that if there is some intervention, well-meaning or not, that perfect result of brokenness becomes a tragedy. For example, the little chick struggling to break free of the egg as it hatches. It is truly a fight for life, but if we intervene and help by pulling away the shell that it fights against and freeing it, we also kill it. That struggle to emerge from the egg is necessary in order for the chick to gain the strength it needs to thrive. Butter on the wrong side. So, uh, are you saying we should never reach out to help someone who is struggling or needs help? This does not mean we should never help, rescue, intervene, or fix something. But it does take a little wisdom to know when to step in and rescue and when to stand back and let learning happen and strength be gained. Here is a cliché story made from a generality that often occurs in our world today that might illustrate a few things that we shouldn't be protected from. And though it may seem a tale only about parenting, it is in fact a tale about wise leadership. And truthfully, when it comes to how kids turn out, you could be the perfect parent. And the child can still end up making some really bad choices. You'll, you'll see what I mean. There was a young boy growing up in a place and a time when he had pretty much anything he needed or wanted. He was from a middle-class family, not wealthy, not poor, but they did well enough. The little boy was happy for the most part. He never had to go hungry, though you'd find it hard to believe by watching him sometimes. As this little scene was a regular occurrence, it seems a chocolate chip cookie was almost always needed after lunch especially when he hadn't eaten much of his lunch. At least from the sound of it, you'd think he might just waste away to nothing without additional life-sustaining cookies. <laughs> if you've been a kid, you've probably done this. If you care for a child, you've had the joy of dealing with it. As you watched him waste his lunch, he complains about the butter being on the wrong side of bread or that the grapes are the wrong color, or that the yogurt is too hot. <laughs> and he must have the white cheese, not the yellow cheese. And then there's the declaration, I'm full. And he gets himself down from the chair at the kitchen table or off the couch where he was watching a cartoon while he played with his food. And three seconds later, he looks at you and says with a pleading voice and puppy dog eyes, I'm hungry. I need a cookie. And the obligatory conversation ensues about him saying he was full and playing with his lunch, but you're not going to win. We'll have a cookie later, you say. I'm really, really hungry, he says. And then weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth begin. And then somehow he gets three cookies. <laughs> and the pattern continues in other ways. He smashes his favorite toy, cries, and he gets a new one. So he does it again and again. He grows a little older and doesn't remember to do his second grade science project. And late the night before it's due, he gets you to help. And you basically do it for him. And it's fun. And because we want him to be happy whenever he gets into trouble, it gets taken care of. And it seems to him that life and the choices he makes, the trouble he causes, and the things he breaks, well, it's really not a big deal because he knows someone will fix it. And if he pleads and seems to struggle enough, he gets pretty much whatever he wants, eventually. Seems like a great life well taken care of and no real consequences when he does something dumb. And that's how life works, at least from his perspective. What is learned? 
As he matures, the pattern continues. He gets in trouble at school. You smooth it over for him. He wrecks his first car. And you get him a new one. He gets arrested, and you bail him out. Absolutely. Wouldn't any parent? I don't want my kid to have to spend the night in jail. Because it's not his fault. It's that bunch he hangs out with. They are bad influence. And the pattern continues. Because no matter what, there's no real consequence for him. He's been taught some important lessons. Lessons that have been reinforced over and over again. And that is that someone will fix it. He will get what he wants. And when something goes really bad, well, it's not his fault. And those rules he's supposed to follow, they don't apply. At least not to him, because he always has an excuse. And it's always someone else at fault. <laughs> and he's right, you know. What he's been taught is true for him. And it's a pattern reinforced over and over again. And this will remain his reality until it can't anymore. Many of us suffer from the same malady to some extent. Hopefully we got the opportunities, sooner or later, to learn better. As this poor, unfortunate soul has had basically everything he wanted and always got a pass for his bad, irresponsible, or just downright stupid behavior. Poor, unfortunate, you say? The kid is spoiled. He's gotten everything handed to him. He never had to fix his own mistakes. He never had to be held responsible for anything he broke or lost or misused. Yep, he is spoiled. Rotten. He has been protected, or perhaps we might say cruelly isolated, from real life. Because caring, but unwise parents, have taught that everything can be replaced, fixed, or repaired, and he is never at fault. However, at some point he is going to end up an angry and broken man. Because life is not like that, at least not real life. This poor child has been handicapped by loving parents who didn't want him to have to struggle. He has been cheated by parents who always minimized the struggle, took away the bad consequences and the pain. Parents who did not understand that if they always rescue their hatchling, when it was time for him to learn, gain strength, wisdom, and skills that will help him to survive and thrive on his own. They were actually removing the kinds of things that might have prepared him for real life. So there are many little outsized nuggets of wisdom we might find in this somewhat overly generalized story of a spoiled brat. But might I suggest just this one? Don't misunderstand, I am not justifying cruelty and neglect. As a retired first responder, I can assure you that there are plenty of times when people need to be rescued from their own ignorant or foolish choices. We as a society should not be looking at those who struggle and only say, Man, that must really suck for you. Good luck with that. Sometimes, preserving life and limb requires greater intervention than a few words of encouragement. At some point, every person will need help and should get help. But often it's important to struggle, stretch, learn, and grow. The tough experiences bring wisdom, understanding, and a comprehension of greater things. Challenges make us better. Don't hide from them. And think twice before you take any action that removes an important learning opportunity from someone else. So here's the ounce. Struggle may be the only way to reveal what really matters. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, if you've gotten to this point, thank you for watching the whole thing. And if you've taken this much time, just take a second longer and give us a thumbs up, a like, uh, a share, uh, subscribe, share it with your friends. We need help convincing the 
algorithms that were worth watching. Thanks.